It was sort of crazy because everybody was like running around sandbagging their house and stuff. Almost a year has passed, but the memories are still vivid from the flood of 2013. Thousands of residents were evacuated from the flats as the South Saskatchewan River rose, pouring water into homes and businesses, reaching as far as the historic Clay District and Elm Street School. The flood hit just a few days before the end of the school year, forcing staff to close its doors early for summer break. It was fun because the school closed early and I got more time to spend with my other friends. And I got to see my mom and my dad. But that wasn't the case for everyone, as many students' homes are located in the floodplain, meaning much was lost in a short amount of time. To help process some of what happened a year ago, the school decided to use an annual art exhibit to talk about the flood and showcase the students' reactions. This is our third year doing an art show with Medelta Potteries and this year when we were discussing kind of the theme of our project, one of the teachers had mentioned the flood and how much our school has been impacted. So when we approached the artist with the idea, she definitely uh, ran with it, decided to do um, relief tiles and all the students um, put their memories, whether it was you know being impacted by an evacuation uh, going to grandma's house or um, just simply watching it from the top of the hill. It's a house that got flooded in trees and like a light post and there's like stuff floating in the water. I have a sun and this is the Finley Bridge and some mountains and then the water. The water getting like high where the like, parts are still holding the bridge up. Well, it was kind of confusing at first because we had to go to hotel and other hotels a bunch of times and it was kind of sad because everyone's valuables were like on the ground and everyone lost things. It's very interesting to see the difference in the tiles because you had children who, the week that they were making these tiles, their homes were being bulldozed and their tile was of the bridge. Or, you know, and it's really interesting to see that that wasn't necessarily what they wanted to talk about or wanted to work on. And that's okay. That's that's all part of what they're doing. And then, you know, I'm we live up on the hill. We weren't affected by it. And so I and children who weren't affected by it, you there's almost a level of excitement about what happened and what went on because it's something they've never seen before and never been a part of before. But there were a few um, where they express, you know, I lost all of my Lego and that was very emotional to them so they drew their, or made their Lego pieces on there. Or a few um, talking about, you know, going to a hotel and having to stay in a hotel for a long time. So, uh, more so when we did our writing pieces to go with the tiles to explain their process, that was um, where I saw a lot of the emotion come out more. The tiles will be on display in the Yule Family Gallery until June 22nd with an opening reception taking place June 10th. The public is invited to see the tiles, hear the stories, and share their own accounts of how they were impacted by the disaster. And as we inch closer to the one year anniversary of this disaster, Hatters will likely continue to process what happened. But as Carrie says, this year's art exhibit is not just about the flood. I really love showing the community each year, regardless of our theme, regardless of what we're doing, how capable the children here at Elm Street are. They're incredibly capable. They can do anything we put out in front of them. And I think that regardless of what the theme is and what's going on in the community, that's the number one thing I want people to know is that these children are more than capable of doing amazing things. For Go Southern Alberta, I'm Christy Pick.